Howdy everyone, Pete Daddy here. Today I wanted to do a review of this brand new 95 rated flashback Blazma Tweety. Now I feel this is just a super, super phenomenal card. And with a basic Kim style, he is a 99 rated defensive midfielder. Now I'm not saying that I necessarily feel basic is the best Kim style. Just trying to show you just how powerful this card can be. Now, I've been a little surprised. I've been reading a lot of the message boards, and a lot of people are saying, eh, it looks like a good card, if only. If only it was his Juventus version. So that is a little bit of a negative. This is celebrating Matuidi's transfer to the MLS. He's going to play for David Beckham's Inter Miami team. So that does make him a little bit harder to link. And I will admit, I posted on our Discord server and... That, that reminds me too, if you're new here, please make sure to subscribe and check the description. Join our Discord server. We're building a really nice community, having a lot of fun. It's going to be perfect when FIFA 21 is here, getting all of our strategies and all of that stuff together. But anyways, I posted something on our Discord server that was like, looks like a strong car, but maybe hard to link. And so I didn't really think about it. I wasn't playing for a little while. But when I came back to the game, I looked at this card again, and I was just like, wow, this card looks amazing. I've got to figure out a way to get them into my team so I thought I'd have to make some sacrifices I know I've got other French players in the team but I thought with the MLS it'd make it too hard to keep everybody I wanted but honestly it was not that hard to get them linked and I'll show you how I have them linked real quick Basically, I moved him to a striker position. I have St. Maximin on the right, Ribery on the left. I do have Eusebio. I was lucky enough to pack Eusebio from a moment's pack, but if you had Dembele, you know, these are three Frenchmen that you could surround him with. You could also put him in this position if you had Dembele, and also if you had Lala, that could be the right back. You could put him in that 4-5-1, put him at strikers. I mean, I think there's a lot of ways to link him. I think we were maybe too quick to write him off at, you know, at the very beginning, so so, but I really feel if you can get him into the team, even if you can get him into the team at eight chemistry, I think he's going to be worth it for you. But first, let's just take a look at his stats. If you look at his pace, 93 acceleration, 88 sprint speed. And I guess I'll talk about chem styles real quick too. There's one stat that I'm not able to boost. I, I kind of got it down to basic chem style engine chem style. I thought about Hawk for a little bit and I even thought about Anchor. Now the one thing, the reason I ended up going with engine, take a look at his dribbling stats. Every single dribbling stat is at 99. So he's 99 agility, 99 balance, 99 reactions, 99 ball control, 99 dribbling, 99 composure. So you know, didn't have to, have to list all of them out, but all dribbling stats are at 99. So that means when he is on the ball, he feels absolutely phenomenal. And I'm going to get into some game footage in a minute, just try to show you what I'm talking about. That also boosted his passing, got that up there a little bit more. Now we are sacrificing a little bit in shooting, but honestly, I don't feel like you're going to want to put Matweedy in a lot of shooting positions. Now it's always nice if they do find themselves in a shooting position that they can bury a goal, but it's not like his terrible shooting stats, but that, that certainly is one place he is weak. The other thing I was hoping to boost was his strength, but I felt that his strength was still going to be enough. And honestly, it's more like a Conte where you're going to ask him to zip in and out of people and be able to just do the things he's going to do by just stealing the ball and not necessarily having to be that imposing presence. But I still, playing with him, I feel like his 86 strength is more than enough. And the other reason I wanted like an engine or a hawk or something like that instead of basic, I'm a big believer in the acceleration is so important in the defensive midfield. So that gives him a plus five acceleration boost to 98. So he's able to just make those quick bursts to get into the passing lanes, to steal the ball, to take it away from people. So I think that is a really nice, I'm really like an engine. I'll just put it that way. It wasn't the most popular Kim style on foot bend, but I think that one works out amazing for me. It also helps them get involved, facilitate the attack a little bit more, going from defense to offense. But I really like the way he feels with that. As far as traits go, nothing that great. He does have the finesse shot trait. But again, you're not really going to ask him to bang in goals for you. And I have played six games with him so far. Zero goals, two assists. 
that's perfect he has medium high work rates which i think is great for a defensive midfielder three star three star in my opinion not a big deal for a defensive midfielder so i feel like this matweedy is absolutely phenomenal and one thing they don't list here he does have the lean body type which is one of the most important things in fifa 20 it just allows players to move a lot better and that's just one of the things i was loving about him is just how well he moves in the game and I did, I would, just to let you know what I was doing, I did have Sissoko in that slot playing that defensive midfield role. And, and I have loved Sissoko. I'll just show you here. I've played 239 games with Sissoko. I've loved him ever since his 81 rated gold card. I've loved this 94. But as of right now, Matweedy has permanently put Sissoko on the bench. I'm not missing Sissoko at all. Yes, he has more of a presence, but Matweedy, when he gets the ball, he's not heavy at all. I mean, not that Sissoko was bad for a big man. Sissoko is good. Don't get me wrong on that, but Matweedy is just next level. I, I mean, if Matweedy had amazing shooting stats, he could even be like a, a Neymar type. I mean, honestly, obviously he doesn't have the skill moves in weak foot. I'm just saying how well he moves with the ball. So Matweedy has permanently beat bench Sissoko at this point. And the other thing I want to say is Matweedy is basically team of the year Conte. And we haven't gotten into that to bring Matweedy into your team. It only requires an 83 rated squad. And according to Footbin, that is 60,000 coins at the moment. And if you compare him to someone like team of the year Conte, now Conte is going to show us slightly better stats, but uh, Conte, they both have 91 pace. The one thing you do get with Conte is better finishing. So Conte, uh, you know, when we come across Team of the Year Contes, it seems like he does occasionally just bury that crazy goal for, for an opponent. But that's still, even if you do have that Team of the Year Conte, you're really not going to ask him to bang in goals for you. His primary objective is going to be to control the midfield, to win the ball back, to do all the all the dirty things. But Passing. I mean, if you look at Conte's passing, his vision is 97, short pass 99, long pass 99. If we look at Matweedy with the, the engine, his vision is 95, short pass 99, long pass 99. So very similar. The dribbling, you know, it may show better for Conte, but unless you boost Conte's dribbling, uh, Matweedy's is going to be better. Now, you certainly can put an engine on Conte, and I didn't check if that would boost every single one of Conte's to 99 or not, but you know, either way, uh, Matweedy's dribbling is going to be just on par with Team of the Year Conte. The defensive stuff is going to be just on par. You see that everything but heading accuracy is basically 99. Slide tackles 94. If we look at Matweedy, we see 99 interceptions, 98 defensive awareness, 97 stand, standing tackle, 99 slide tackle. So very similar. Now, one thing I do like, you know, unless you boost it, you see Matweedy's strength is 86. Team of the Year Conte's strength is 81. So, you know, even with that, uh, Matweedy has better strength overall, and he has that aggression, he has that stamina, and you'll see in this match that I'm going to show in just a second, it went into extra time, and Matweedy uh, just took over the game in extra time, so I'm just in love with this Matweedy as of now, so I guess let's just go into the game footage, let me show you what happened in the matches to let you know how I got my opinion. This was the first game that we came across, so I'm trying to highlight everybody. This here, I'm gonna to try to highlight, you know, so you can see where Matweedy is on every single one. I'm just kind of trying to get a couple dribbles with him, see how he feels. Whenever I review a player, I kind of try to get a few dribbles, see what they can do. So let's see what Matweedy can do here. So the ball just goes to him. They, these are my first touches with him, and you could just see there just how agile he was perfect on the ball you know able to pass back to him he makes this move around the ball sticks to his feet now he is one i feel is a true 99 dribbler and then this is what we got him for for some for some defense this is not me controlling him this is kind of off screen when he moves into the position and then he just moves into a perfect passing lane steals the ball nice pass right up just so fluid on the ball now this first game with him, I'm just showing you this. We go up 3-0 in the 33rd minute, which leads to my opponent rage quitting. So I knew that wasn't enough to really judge an opinion or have an opinion about Matweedy. I mean, he played fine in that game, just was not enough. So then we go into another match, going up against a really strong team here with Team of the Year CR7. Just phenomenal team all around. So we have our work cut out for us here. 
But just to show you here, Matweedy on the ball again. That nice movement. He steals the ball, passes to Eusebio. Eusebio does not get the goal there, but Matweedy's nice positioning on defense led to that scoring chance. So here's another one. Watch Matweedy just run through the ball there, take it. Beautiful pass. I mean, I just can't even tell. Oh, that, that one did lead to a goal. So that was Matweedy's first assist for us. He just ran through that ball. Just perfect agility. Controls the ball whenever he gets a touch on it. That made a really nice pass into Eusebio and was able, Eusebio, Eusebio was able to bury the goal. And here it's just like he's just a joy to, to dribble with in the midfield. I have not had a defensive midfield partner. And you see that one, he didn't get the assist, but that, that led to the goal. And so at the half, we are actually trailing 4-2. to two, And I kind of put this one out there just for a little motivation. I mean, we did give up you know six shots on target, but we had more shots. We had good pass accuracy. So just want to let you guys know if you are trailing in a game, just make sure to keep fighting. As you'll see, I'll give a little spoiler. We do come back to win, but you know, just make sure you keep fighting in the game, keep going. Now, one thing you may be saying, Matweedy can't be that good if he gave up if you gave up four goals in the first half, but this was just one of those games. Now, normally I don't give up many goals at all. Defense is one of the things that I feel like I'm really strong at. But this was just one of those games where it felt like EA just said, okay, this is gonna be a high scoring affair. Everything just flew in. Everything just bounced around, you know, both sides. You know, you can see I had a lot of shots. My opponent had a lot of shots. You know, some games you'll have, you won't have that many shots for an entire match. So this was just one of those games. So I want to point that out. There was nothing Matweedy did wrong. Just felt like one of those games where it was going to be a crazy game, a crazy high scoring affair. So here you can see Matweedy's positioning. Now what I do here, I kind of go out of position with Matweedy. But what I'm illustrating here is just how rapid Matweedy is. He's able to recover back. So I moved him a little too far up, but he was still able to recover back to get into that passing lane. And again, this is a nice one here. You can see we're 4-4 now in the 87th minute. Passing back and forth, Matweedy and De Bruyne chewing up some space. Now Matweedy, if you notice that there, he slid back. I mean, slid back to cover the defensive midfield and also give us a nice outlet so we get it back to him and by this time of the game i was already just in love with matweedy i loved passing back to him i don't think i've had that all year the way i've kind of positioned my team is in a 4-2-3-1 and i've got basically one defensive midfielder that's kind of my box to box that can attack, that can do everything. My other defensive mil midfielder is usually my, my actual defensive midfielder. And pretty much every single one of them I've had has not been as super strong on the ball. You know, there may be good, you know, like, like Sissoko. Sissoko is a good example. He's a great defensive midfielder, but he's not that great in attack necessarily. You know, he's just a little bit heavy, a little bit stiff on the ball. This is the first time I've had a pairing with like Matweedy and De Bruyne that both of them, I felt 1 million percent comfortable with both of them on the ball, getting the ball to them. I knew they'd be able, you know, if they were pressured, I knew Matweedy would be able to get it, get it out, make a nice pass, dribble with it. So that was a really nice feeling that just not worrying at all about getting the ball to Matweedy. And then here we bury a goal. We take the lead, 5-4. But as you can see, we can see, like I said, this was just one of those crazy matches. We went up 5-4 in the 88th minute. Then we gave up a 90th minute goal and whatever. We got an extra time. But now this is what's crazy. Extra time is when it felt like Matweedy just completely took over the match. And that's part of it is his 99 stamina. I mean, not like that's completely uncommon at this stage of the game. But he was just flying all over the pitch and, and extra time. And you can see just some of the stuff he does here just flies over. Like, I'm not controlling him at that point. The AI kind of moved him into that passing lane, which is amazing. I mean, you can't control everyone at once. But nice, just kind of moved him over a little bit so that I could switch to him to get that pass. And so that was really nice. And here's Matweedy again, just being an absolute monster, just tackling machine, taking the ball from everybody. And again, I have no problem. I, this is, like I said, it, it was just a joy having him on the ball. I think with that engine chem style, having everything at 99 chemistry. Now it did not lead to a goal, but again, just just felt perfect getting the ball to Matweedy. And again, there just on the defense, stealing the ball back leads to a nice chance you know we didn't convert that one but it, it did 
did lead to a nice chance. Now, there, this is one thing I wanted to point this out. The one potential negative I had was there was, I think, two different occasions over the six games I played with Matuidi where I've had this situation. And you can see, I feel like I've got him positioned fairly well. Now, this is one I feel like if I had Sissoko there, who's a little bit taller, or if you had like a Vieira type, you know, someone who was a little bit taller, I feel like they would steal this ball. But this ball ends up going right through Matuidi. Now, I don't know if that's some sort of... EA boost or if it's just where Matweedy's not as tall as some of the other guys or just weird luck, whatever it is. But I did have this happen two times in six games where I felt like I had Matweedy perfectly positioned to take a ball and it, you know, maybe just skated by his foot this much where I felt like Sissoko maybe would have stole that one. So they just wanted to point that out. But you know, he does recover just and you can see his agility just able to whip in and out, cover multiple people. And here, Matweedy presenting himself for a nice play, nice, able to move it up. Feels beautiful on the ball, ends up leading to Zlatan trying to bury it. Falls over to Eusebio, and we end up getting the win. And I'll, I'll honestly tell you, this is the first time I've had this feeling in a while. And, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. But at the end of this match, I was just kind of buzzing at just how well Matweedy played. And, you know, I'm someone who packed Eusebio maybe, um, I don't know, a couple weeks ago I packed Eusebio and I was buzzing when I packed him. But I don't think I've had a game at the end of the match where I'm buzzing from Eusebio's play, even though I think he had three or four goals in this match, whatever, whatever he had. Just something... I just can't even explain it how well he felt. Now, I've played with Team of the Year Conte just very briefly, mostly in drafts. I haven't had a chance to really do him, so maybe that's how you feel. If you already have Team of the Year Conte, you may already feel that way. But just having those two defensive midfielders that could just control the ball, that could dribble with it, that could just move. I mean, FIFA 20 is so tough to play in bad connection. You need, you know, and most of the time we have that heavy, poor, bad connection or whatever it is, poor gameplay, heavy gameplay. So when you have these guys that can move, it just opens up so much stuff. When you have someone like, you know, I mean, it, this even happens sometimes when you pass to a Eusebio. They just take that really heavy touch. The ball gets stolen. Now that gets... That's even worse when you play with someone like Sissoko. And again, Sissoko moves great for a big man, but he still has that where if you get the ball to him and your opponent presses you immediately, you may not be able to move out, out of that out of that press and you may turn the ball over. Matweedy was just able to move, able to pass, able to dribble. And, and you know, like I said, it's the first time in a long time in FIFA 20. I mean, I know we're near the end of the game cycle, but I was just buzzing with how well Matweedy played in this game and just how good or how opening it felt to be able to have both of my CDMs involved and not feel any worry at all about Matweedy on the ball. So that's just all I can really say about that. And, you know, in this particular match, he was a 9.2 rated. Eusebio had three goals. Matweedy had two assists. So I kind of looked down through some of his stats. And I was also really surprised, like, if you get down to his, it should go to that in just a second. I'm hoping, come on, are we going to go to it? All right, so to his passes completed. Look at this. Matweedy had more passes than De Bruyne, which I was shocked by because De Bruyne is my box-to-box -box mid. I don't have him. I've got him, I think, on a get-forward instruction. So he is just trying to... He's getting forward. He should be more involved in the attack. But actually, Matweedy had more passes. And Matweedy even had more dribbles, which we'll get to that in just one second. I'm, I'm sure of it. It's going to go there. We're kind of having some slow times here. But uh, Matweedy completed 29 out of 30 dribbles. I mean, no one else was even close to that. I mean, you can see Ribery on the bench there had 25. Eusebio also had 30 dribbles. De Bruyne had 21. So Matweedy was just heavily involved. And that's what I'm saying. I just I felt completely comfortable with him. And then as far as tackles won, and this is, I'm kind of thinking this is just one of those games. Again, don't look at necessarily the final result for how well Matweedy played because we did give up a lot of goals, but that is rare. 
And honestly, I kind of feel like this is a game I may have lost if I did not have a Tweety. I feel like if I had Sissoko in the match, I maybe wouldn't have had that little extra oomph to be able to get these extra goals and to also defend as well as he did. But if you look at the tackles, look at Ramos. He won one tackle out of five. And in my opinion, Ramos is the best center back in the game. I think this was just one of those games that EA decreed, okay, this is going to be a high-scoring game. Longley didn't have very good tackles. Nobody. You know, usually Ramos is winning about every tackle. Same with Longley. So, you know, you can see there just how poor the tackle rate was. So, like I said, I just feel this was just one of those games. And having a Tweedy just made things so much easier. Was allowed us to be able to to pull out that win that otherwise we maybe wouldn't have had. And part of it may have just been my frustration. Sometimes you play in a game like that, you get really frustrated with, with your player. So if I had Sissoko and he was losing the ball under pressure or something like that. You just get frustrated and you just say, forget this, I don't even want to play. But it was just a joy playing. And you can see there, Matweedy only lost three fitness points. Now I need to look at this screen more than I do. I was kind of surprised. I just decided to look at this because again, I was just buzzing after this game of how well Matweedy played. And if you look at uh, the positioning, he had six interceptions and it says ball retention that he won the ball nine times. Now I never really look at this. So I kind of compared it to De Bruyne, who was my other CDM. He had one interception and four possessions won. So I was just kind of curious how that compared. So I just cycled through everybody. No one else was anywhere close on interceptions or possession. So he was just an absolute animal. I mean, I don't know what else to say about him. He was just outrageous. I loved playing with him. I love how good he feels on the ball. He's going to be my permanent CDM unless just something crazy happens. And I guess that's the other thing I didn't mention. I think he compares favorably to Team of the Year Conte, but Matweedy is 60,000 coins and that Conte is like 900,000 coins on the market. And that's after coming down massively over the last couple weeks. That Conte for the longest time was more than 1.5 million coins. So we're talking an amazing card for not a lot of coins. So I would highly, highly recommend them. Highly recommend you trying to fit them into your squad. Even on 8 Chemistry, I think he's going to feel amazing for you. I'm loving the engine chem style, but I think he would work with a lot of different chem styles. But anyways, boys, this is going to wrap it up. I just wanted to share with you my review of Matweedy. Let you know how good I think he is. I think he is an absolute game changer. I would rate, rate him as one of the best ball-winning CDMs in the game, right up there with Conte. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone is better. That, that's what I would say. is con For ball-winning CDMs, Team of the Year Conte, and this Matweedy, and that's the end of the story. But anyways, boys, this is going to wrap it up. Make sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, but I'll see you guys soon. Bye.